In the previous video, I briefly spoke about the different types of equations that you'll be expected to do in grade 10. I spoke about solving equations using inverse operations. It's very, very important to understand these basics. And in this video, we're quickly going to recap linear equations. Now, what's important to note about linear equations is that these sorts of equations will only get you one solution, one answer. X is equal to something, and that's it. A way that we can recognize it is we will see an equation of degree one. Now you might think, what does that mean? An equation of degree one? If you multiply out these brackets, which we will do in a second, so this is example one, this is example two, when you multiply out the brackets, you will see that all of our x's have a exponent of one, okay? Which means that the equation has at most one solution and only one solution. And we need to remember to do inverse operations. So for example, over here, now I chose this one for a very good reason. A lot of students will, I pause the screen and try it for yourself, see if you can get it. But a mistake that a lot of students make is they forget to do their operations correctly. So when you are simplifying the left-hand side of this equation before we carry on solving, we need to distribute. It's the distributive property or the distributive law. And I've done a whole playlist on this thing, but basically we need to multiply the term that is directly outside the brackets, so negative 4, that needs to be multiplied into the brackets. Where a lot of students go wrong is they think that they must first subtract these. That's wrong. So if you want more information about that, go watch the video on the distributive property or the distributive law. So how do you do this? You carry the 3 down. The negative 4 gets distributed or multiplied into the brackets. So negative 4 times x is negative 4x, and negative 4 times 2 is negative 8. On the right-hand side of the equation, I can't do anything, so I just keep on writing. Now, at this stage of our equation, if you pause and take a look at the equation, you can see that the x's, all of them, have an exponent of 1. So the power of 1, which means it's a linear equation, one solution. So our next step is to get the x's to one side, and then the non-x's, or the things that don't have x's, to the other side. Now, I often say to my students, and I think a lot of you do know this, but I try and avoid a negative x just because it saves me having to do an extra operation or inverse operation at the end of the sum. So I'm going to take the x's to the right-hand side of the equation to avoid having negative. So you'll see what I mean. So this is 3x. It's staying over here. So it's 3x. To get rid of the negative 4x, I want it gone. Your teacher might say we are taking it over the equal sign. Okay. That's just like technically incorrect mathematical language, but you know what I mean. So the negative 4x, what is the opposite or the inverse of minus 4x? plus 4x. So you do the inverse operation. So it's 3x plus adding 4x. So it's gone from the side of the equation. Then we've got the 3, which stays here, the negative 8, which stays here, and over here, the positive 16. I want to get rid of it from that side of the equation. So I need to minus 16 on this side, and then minus 16 on this side, subtract 16. The inverse of plus 16 is minus 16, so it disappears from that side of the equation, basically. So you have got 3x plus 4x is 7x, and here I've got 3 minus 8, which is negative 5, minus 16, which is negative 21, and then... We are not done. Over here, the x is being multiplied by 7. So I want to get rid of the 7. I need to do the inverse operations. Opposite of times 7 is divide by 7. You do it on both sides of the equation, which is why over here, these cancel, you're left with x. And over here, what's tw negative 21 divided by 7? It's going to be a negative because negative divided by a positive is a negative. 21 divided by 7, 3. And there's your answer. Now take note of what I said earlier, only one solution, only one answer, and you can always check to see if you've done your equation correctly. Take your answer, which is negative 3, and in the place of x on both sides, substitute negative 3. Work out the left-hand side, see what you get. Work out the right-hand side, see what you get. If you get the same answer on both sides, you've done your equation correctly. In my second example, my variable is m, so I need to get m by itself. But first, you can see I have this situation over here where I have to do the distributive property or the distributive law, and over here where I have to do the distributive property or the distributive law. So you multiply into the brackets. Just keep reminding yourself you're multiplying. I see a lot of students making a mistake where they accidentally think that they are adding. You are multiplying into brackets. Very, very important. So negative 2 multiplied by 7, negative 14, negative 2 multiplied by negative 3m, positive 6m, and then carry the plus 2 
down. Remember, you only distribute the term that is squashed up against the bracket into the brackets. So some students ask me, ma'am, why am I not multiplying that into the brackets? It's its own separate term. This one is squashed up against the bracket, so that needs to be multiplied in. I hope that makes sense. Now again, you can see that my m's, my variable here, has exponents of one, which means it's a linear equation. I'm only going to have one solution. I'm going to keep my m's on this side of the equation. So 7m is going to stay here, positive 7, and positive 6m is going to stay here. Then I need to get rid of the negative 14, the negative 14, and the positive 2. We need to do inverse operations. So the opposite of minus 14 is plus 14. Okay, positive 14. Basically, we're adding 14 on this side, which gets rid of it. Here, the opposite of minus 14 is plus 14. What you do to the one side, you do to the other side. That gets rid of that. And the opposite of plus 2 is minus 2. Gets rid of that. What you do to the one side, you must do to the other side. So 7m plus 6m is 13m, like terms. 14 plus 14 minus 2 is 26. And then we are multiplying m by 13. So inverse operations of multiply by 13 is divide by 13. We're dividing both sides by 13. m is equal to 26 divided by 13 is 2. Again, one solution. And if you take your answer of 2, so you substitute 2 in the place of m and you work it out, you can use your calculator, type it in properly, you will see that the left-hand side of the equation will be 0, which is equal to the right-hand side of the equation. So we've solved correctly. And that's it. That's a basic recap of linear equations. Obviously, you need to know the basics in order to succeed in the more complicated stuff that is coming up in the playlist. I'll see you in another video very soon. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't yet. Bye, everyone.